Good evening, everyone. Um, good evening to our very small audience tonight and to our live viewers. Thank you for joining us for tonight's Fireplace Conversations. My name is Edla Kaumbi, and I am the Executive Director of the Namibia Institute of Corporate Governance, the NICG. Um, we exist to promote good governance in, in our nation, and we do this by you know, advocacy and thought leadership and capacity building. And the Fireplace Conversation is one such avenue where we advocate for good governance. And we started our winter series um, this year in June. Um, this has come on since 2022. So we started in June talking about um, ESG. We talked about the E of ESG. We talked about the S of, ES of ESG. Um, the G we talked about um, quite comprehensively last year. And so in July, we are talking about IT. Um, IT, cybersecurity, and all things tech, you know, ICT. And so this evening, we're starting by talking about 5G. And I'm joined in the studio tonight or on set uh, by Dr. Monica Nehemia and by Ms. Dronel Lachranci. And so um, I'm just going to have you introduce yourselves and yourselves and it's just tell us who you are and your background, especially as it pertains to 5G. Um, we can start with you. Start with you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, thank you very much, Etla, and also thank you for the invitation. It is our pleasure to join us. Uh, I am Renal Lachranse, I'm the Executive of Engineering and Technical Services of CRAN, the regulator. Um, my experience spans over more than 20, 25 years in the industry. I've worked both for, the, for a number of the operators, as well I've joined uh, CRAN uh, in 2012. So at this stage I have close to more than 10 years regulatory experience behind us. And yes, certainly 5G provided some regulatory challenges, but it also provides us with a number of opportunities. Um, as you know, the 5G strategy was also published at the beginning of last year, and it is under implementation at present. Ms. Renel. Thank you. Um, Dr. Nehemia. <laughs> so my us. name is Monica Nehemia. Um, I also have um, roughly more than 20, 22 years ago experience in the industry. I started off as a telecommunication uh, technician at Telecom Namibia. Um, that's, this is coupled with um, ICT, where I have done, um, I've been heading the IT departments within the government of Namibia, different uh, ministries. I've been within M with MTC now for the past four years, four and a half years, and I've been heading the technology department that's responsible for all mobile, uh, mobile communication, deployment, management, and, 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 and support. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, while we have you uh, on spread there, like they say, uh, maybe provide us an overview of the current status of 5G technology in Namibia, um, what advancements have been made, and uh, maybe expect the timelines of deployment, because you talked about you kind of in charge of deployment as well. Yeah. Um, you, with 5G, you know, the, the mobile um, evolution itself, uh, starting off with 1G, 5G, where we are now, is that uh, from 1G up to 4G, there's always been an improvement of the predecessor. Okay. Um, 1G, 2G was an improvement on, on 1G, 2G, 3G is an improvement on 2G because 2G basically only had uh, voice capability and SMS. So 3G then came with more data capabilities, mm -hmm. but it had a limitation on the bandwidth um, that one could actually utilize, uh, such as video services were limited to that. And 4G came and it had, uh, it came with bigger capacity uh, where one could actually sit with ease and, and just watch your, your, your Netflix. Um, so then um, what, what 5G brought about, what they're saying that 5G is actually a different ball game when it comes to, even though it is a, 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 an improvement on 4G, it, 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 it's so different in a way that you know, it came with unprece unprecedented uh, data capabilities that okay. we have never known before that um, gives us the, the insight and the capability of innovation and technologies that we actually also never had. Okay. Um, the establishment of, uh, of, of, of so many other uh, technologies, such as artificial intelligence, the data capability that comes with that. Mm -hmm. And where we currently are is that um, we have, we, we tested um, and we, we tested uh, the, the, sorry, the capability. Um, I, I should just mention that I'm recovering from a flu now. My apologies for my voice. Mm. Is that um, with 5G itself is that 
you know, it's it's deployed into different categories. There's there's a low level one, there's a median one, and then there's a high level one. With the median one and the spectrums that are um, uh, the capacity that the spectrums we have, um, and we've been deploying some of the sites with the capability for 5G. But however, the data capabilities that comes with that is the data capabilities that we can also get with the experience of the 4G that's already deployed. Uh, however, is that what we would like to experience is the high-end capability of data that, um, that enables many of the technology that we cannot achieve with the current technology that we have now. And that is the one that we don't have now, so we are waiting for the regulator to to avail that uh, spectrum so that we are able to do the deployment. We are very excited about that. So we had a trial, um, two, three months about it, just okay. to demonstrate uh, the, the capacity and the capability of what it can do. Mm -hmm. And uh, we are eagerly waiting for the availing of the spectrum so that we can deploy it to all our users and our customers. Wonderful, sounds exciting. It is wow. exciting, wow. we are excited. So the regulator, I hope you're excited or are you getting nervous about all of these things? <laughs> Maybe from a corporate governance perspective, what are the responsibilities of boards? I mean, if we're hearing these exciting things, what are some of the things that, you know, governments should be, I mean, governments boards should be on the lookout for in terms of deployment and the management of technology? Uh, yeah. First of all, yeah, uh, as Monica indicated, is 5G is a different ballgame. Yeah. Uh, it is not an operator-centric technology, it's a customer-centric technology, which means it also shows you the convergence between IT and what we knew as the normal telecommunication sector, which makes it very difficult for the board because they have to rethink the business models. Wow. And when you start rethinking business models, mm -hmm. you have to do a risk assessment. Uh, also, uh, you have to reskill some of your staff to understand the, both the horizontal and vertical integration that 5G mm -hmm. can provide and its capability to create use cases that are specific to the customer demand. Mm -hmm. And not only broadband, but for, for a multitude of other use cases in the trade center, in the, in the logistics sector, in the mining and energy sector. Mm -hmm. And we see, do see a huge interest, especially from the mining and energy sector mm -hmm. uh, in 5G. Uh, similarly, it also created a challenge for CRAN in the regulatory framework that we are now not only have to cater for the telecommunications licensees, but also for the enterprise market okay. that wishes to operate private networks and not necessarily make use of one of the public networks, but choose to self-provide. Okay. So for uh, boards, first of all, yes, it is governance, but it's also a risk assessment. Yeah. It's a rethinking of a business model, mm -hmm. uh, but if you can harness all the opportunities, the, the future looks great in terms of energy efficiency, higher productivity, and then, of course, the industrialization of various sectors. So green hydrogen is also making us pretty excited because 5G plays a dominant role in that sector. So what are some of the primary risks? Like the, you, you mentioned in terms of not just rethinking the business model, but maybe also some risks that they... We, can you name a few? Oh, Marek, uh, allowing now also for, for edge computing and network slicing. So your, your, what we will call your attack plan has expanded. Your uh, attack you, plan? Yeah, well, yeah, okay. Explain that to us. Uh, plan, know these yeah. things. Because mm -hmm. it has expanded, because now you don't only have to look internal into your company, you also have to vet your vendors mm -hmm. to make sure that they are aware of, of the risks that comes with 5G, but also in what they provide to you, mm -hmm. that the necessary security features are enabled. Mm -hmm. Because 5G does come with enhanced security features. Okay. Uh, especially in terms of the authentication of mm -hmm. the customer on the network. Mm -hmm. Okay. And you, Dr. Monica, does that make sense? Or did you, does, did MTC do that? Um, is that something that do you want to add to? Yeah, no, I'm in total agreement. Mm -hmm. um, I think the only thing that I can add to that is that, you see, the, how the playing field of uh, security has actually changed is that we, the previous technologies is that the... The service provider provides the capability, the mobile connectivity, and you are basically just um, limited to your either your mobile device or your laptop. You know, it, the, 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 the devices connecting to the mobile network are very limited. 
you know, what 5G does is that it has opened the spectrum so big that, you know, you have what they are calling that um, IoT devices, Internet of Services, uh, in, uh, Internet of Things. And this device can be anything. Um, you can have your garage connected to the mobile network. You can have your fridge connected to the mobile network. So that when you have left your house and by any chance maybe forgot to, uh, to, to close your garage, you will be notified by that. So the security aspect, you know, that needs to be embedded in all these Internet of Things um, has become wider. And then that's why the, the landscape for any possible cyber attacks has grown and it has come with that. But um, it has been in such a way that, you know, uh, with all the deployment and the, and the establishment of some of these securities that uh, some of these technologies that securities inherently are considered uh, when all this is established. And then it, it also evolves. The more it's deployed and more it's used, um, so are security vulnerabilities also detected and improved accordingly. Yeah. Who, who, who is doing this improving and all of that that you're saying as things are big? The OEMs. Okay. Um, what we, OEMs? Um, uh, uh, owner of the equipment, manufacturer. Oh, okay. Right? I'm right. <laughs> <laughs> yes, please speak English. English. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, sorry about that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but you know, it's, it's, it's iterative. Okay. So technology always evolve. Um, we know that. So mm -hmm. that's why you have your, you buy your Samsung, but then you always have to do updates okay. here and there. It's okay. because it is an improvement mm -hmm. in the application that needs to be considered. Mm -hmm. Okay, I, I think you might have touched on it because we were just talking about the introduction of 5G and the risk profile for businesses. Um, maybe can we talk about how, maybe specifically, I don't know, um, it's mostly you talked about the attacks and that it's widened that. Um, can we maybe, maybe examples of maybe, I don't know, specific examples, whether it's for healthcare or transportation or telecommunications? Um, and for, uh, as an example, um, uh, as we explained that the, the, your attack plane is widening because previously we also you uh, normally that your settings on your network at the site or at the tower itself, your networks become now software defined, which means should any, any, any entity get access to the network that can have far reaching consequences. Uh, as you can have, don't have to go out to a site to make changes, you do it from where you are positioned in the core of the network. What we have also seen is that uh, your user is not savvy enough yet in Namibia in terms of cyber hygiene when they are online, uh, which means they tend to click on links. And unfortunately, your end user is your weakest link. Uh, with that, it is also there where the enterprise market now have to decide, are they going to rely on the public network to provide all these services, or is there rather a portion of the network that they would like to self-provide uh, to have better security or control over the security of the network, and then for normal email traffic and uh, uh, file transfers, then they are making use of the public network. Uh, it also brings the question into being of where do you store your data Wow! Uh, mm -hmm. as well. And uh, because where you store your data, you must have also have a business continuity in case of a disaster. Yeah. How do you recover it? Or how do you even connect to your data if you are making use of cloud? Yeah. But would it be different from your usual just data protection? Like... Isn't it just the same as what we had before, or, or should it be more enhanced because of 5G? Like, what, it, what is the difference in the... It, it has to be more enhanced. Okay. Uh, what we call Explain it, you it. also help mm -hmm. now to have to have a look at what we call your grey rhinos and your black swans. Okay, fix it. In risk management, <laughs> which means you also have... Where well, you've previously done oh, oh, risk yeah. in terms of mm -hmm. your, your own yeah. uh, assessment, now you also have to think... But what if my provider comes under, example, a cyber attack? Mm. How will I react? How will I recover? Um, you have to, we call it a black swan. Mm -hmm. It's not to say it will happen. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, yeah. if it happens, it can be disastrous. The moment that isn't a risk? I mean, before 5G, wasn't that already a risk, though? It was there, but it was at the smallest scale. Ah, I see. In, in 2G, 3G, it barely existed. 
Mm -hmm. and, and now because you've added the whole part of the internet and uh, IT sector together with telco, mm -hmm. it looks much different. Okay. So what we see emerging is we see uh, some of the entities that are concentrating on providing security to the networks, mm -hmm. some that are enhancing the IT products, some that try to uh, combine the IT with the telco products. Mm -hmm. We see more uh, data centers coming into being and mm -hmm. classified, national, internationally classified data centers. And then, of course, the higher volume, uh, volumes of data that is being stored in Namibia, also by foreign entity, is picking up, mm -hmm. especially uh, due to some of the consequences of load shedding in South Africa. We have seen companies moving the data to, to Namibia, rather because we, we don't have load shedding or we are not okay, right. prone to load shedding. Mm -hmm. right, yeah. I will not say we don't have touch wood. Yeah. Uh, touch, wood. <laughs> touch wood. But also as you become more reliant on your smart devices, let's say, for example, the power grid moves to a small, being a, what we call a smart power grid. Mm -hmm. Yes, you have all this monitoring capability, which means you also have to prepare for failure or a cyber attack on the power grid. Mm -hmm which was not there before. So your, your exco and your board now have to think on what can happen. Sorry, before I move on to you, Dr. Monica. So in terms of from a regulatory perspective, are there, are there things that you are um, ensuring or like um, requirements that you have in place to ensure, or is it like the same Africans man man for himself, you know, like should they... <laughs> Um, uh, no, not at all. The, the regulator is also expanding our mandate and how we approach things. Uh, where we also previously uh, uh, did not look really into information security of, the, of uh, the operators' networks, we are now looking further to creating national uh, uh, plans for the ICT sector for emergency communications in the event of a huge scale man-made disaster or natural disaster because the economy is becoming more and more reliant on the ICT sector to be able to function and those consultations has to already to be starting to kick up mm. and not only with the licensees but also within the different uh, ministries mm -hmm. because we need to upgrade the national plans uh, and then we need to have task teams in event that something like that happens. Mm -hmm. So the resiliency of the network yeah. is also very much now on the regulatory agenda. Yeah. Do you have timelines for these things or are we not? Consultations has already undergone. We have a draft plan, but yes, it does require further, further consultation. Okay. But it is deliverable for, well, this, this financial year for, for the regulator, which means before the March 25. Okay. All right, so we don't want to just, you know, be worrying about the things that can go wrong. Uh, we also want to, you know, think about opportunities and innovation. So, Dr. Monica, I mean, you did mention about your garage, you know, you can, something can notify you that you left your garage open. What opportunities does 5G present for business innovation in Namibia? Like, can you provide examples of sectors, you know, that would benefit? And how should boards position their companies to take advantage of the opportunities? Yes, I think... Um... Before I, I actually address that, I just want to um, uh, take you back to a discussion that we had a year, uh, two years ago, that was very aggressively uh, driven from the office of the president with the uh, fourth industrial revolution task team. And with that, that was a national um, a drive to look at the fact that, you know, we need to industrialize um, and change the way how we do business. So the different uh, industries within the country need to look at, you know, how are we going to adapt themselves to the changes that are coming forth? Because um, ICT has become so pervasive, there is not any business that's that's operating without the reliance on on ICT or technology. So with that, um, with the fourth industrial revolution, one one actually saw that, you know, you you look at artificial intelligence, you look at cloud computing, you look at um, 5G being one of the main components that are actually driving the fourth industrial revolution for IR. Um, the different industries that, are, that, can, that can derive uh, immediate benefits from the deployment of this, if one look at it, is, is the likes of the mines, um, telecommunications ourselves. Uh, if you look at the energy um, uh, industry, if one looks at the health industry, um, I, was, I was reading 
an article um, two months ago of the first doctor that actually made use of robotics of having um, a off-site uh, surgery, making use of robots relying on the, the 5G network. So with that is that the 5G network brings um, almost zero latency, meaning that there's no delay. So if you do something like that, it needs to happen immediately. So these are one of the benefits in the health sector that one is looking at that um, the cost of um, health services where somebody needs to be flown to a different country just to have that can actually be achieved remotely. Um, and this is one of the enablements that comes with um, 5G. One also think about in the mining where the big truck driver um, needs to crush the stones at the mining site with the risk of any, any accident that can happen. Uh, it can actually be minimized now because the truck driver can sit remotely and control the car, making use of the 5G, um, 5G capabilities that, that is there. Because if this car is, is driven and it needs to react immediately, 5G has a capability because of the zero or no tolerance of, um, of delay. Uh, so there are many other benefits that one actually can, can think of um, that, uh, that many of the different industry can leverage from, mm -hmm. from, the, from the use and the deployment of 5G within the country. Mm -hmm. um, so when one is actually looking at um, the corporate governance of that is that for each and every organization is that the vision um, technology is not established in isolation of the vision or the strategy that the organization has. So one of the um, things that, um, say for instance, that comes with 5G is that they have something that they call network slicing. So within the whole ecosystem of 5G, um, they can do a configuration where, um, say for instance, um, I can give an example, say, of a football match at the soccer field. Uh, everybody is connected to the network and everybody is, is, um, is using the 5G network. But you can have a dedicated a slice of that network to NBC only because they are screening and there should be no delay and it should not be interfered with anything. So um, if you have an organization where you know that you have part of your operation that needs no interference, that needs to be up at all times and guaranteed, you can have configurations as such to make sure that, you know, even if the network is poor by any other reason, that there is that dedicated um, uh, uptime of services that one can get through the capability that 5G can, 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 can use. So there are many different use cases in many different industries that can actually leverage from um, the, the, the capacity, capabilities and the enablement that 5G can, can actually provide to the business, depending on what the business strategy and the business vision is. Yeah. So good. Yeah, it's exciting, certainly. Uh, but I'm just thinking back to, we. I'm going to talk about ethical considerations as well, just now specifically, but I, we spoke about the S of ESG um, the last time we had the fireplace conversations and, you know, talking about sustainability um, in terms of how we, you know, look at our people. Now, I'm just wondering, this, this truck driver, you know, you, you, so will they need to be trained? Will they lose their job? What happens? What happens to this, you know, the, the, in, even in the health sector and stuff, if robotics are doing these things, how, you, how do we look after our people? And I don't know if I'm, yeah, if I'm asking the question correctly. Yes, I think I get it. I'm looking at what you're trying to say. So when you look at the deployment um, of a technology, and this is actually where the corporate governance and um, the board members of the organization needs to come in and look at the impact of, of this uh, deployment is going to be or what it's going to mean to the whole organization. So with many of these um, comes the skills element. And um, like an example of the truck driver, the truck driver used to sit physically in the truck doing that. So now this truck driver, because technology is going to take the driving over, but there's an element of control. So this truck driver needs to be trained, needs to be capacitated so that he's technologically advanced to sit in a control room and do the driving from where he is. So we need to look at um, the whole ecosystem that, you know, even if the technology comes in and is going to have an impact on employment, what is going to happen to that part of the employees? How are we going to upskill them? How, how is it going to impact the whole business ecosystem and the dynamics within the business so that we can just make sure that there's a continuation with, um, with the business strategy? That yeah. Have? 
Yeah, no, that's good. Do you want to add anything? Because I was going to ask you that, like um, ethical considerations in deployment. Um, how should companies address potential social impacts, such as you know, changes in employment or disparities in technology access? Um, as Monica rightly said, there, there is a plentitude of, of opportunities uh, with 5G. And uh, one of them is certainly is um, to improve worker, cons worker safety. Uh, because not only is it because of, of say, folks the, that it's addressing fatigue of drivers and it can assist them in driving, it also creates opportunities for training with virtual reality where you can actually experience what you are doing, which enhance the skills of the, of the person that you are training, especially where you have to train where they will be working in a high-risk environment. You would prefer to train your people with virtual reality rather than sending them into a high-risk environment untrained and training them. We have also even seen that some of the mines have already uh, adopted what we call robo-dogs, uh, to create, do the, take some of the functionalities and do it instead of the human way. It is unsafe for the human to be, which is also enhanced worker safety. Similar, when you have a better monitoring of your electricity grid and your water, your water supply grid, you can be more efficient in what you supply. And it enhances the operations of the entity that has to provide the service to you, not necessarily taking away a job from anyone, but improving social life. Uh, that you have got a more reliable, it can monitor your habits in terms of how you use uh, power, for example, and when there is a high usage, it can direct the necessary power resources to prevent interruptions that have a further knock-on effect on those entities that are using the services. Uh, with enhanced education, we also have been able to create special opportunities for our people with disabilities by using interactive white books and enhance their training experience and help them to become members of society that can be actively participating in the economy. I was going to ask that. Um, that would be my next question, because um, sort of part of the question that I just asked, you know, in terms of just access to technology, because it sounds really high tech and advanced and things, you know, in how are we including the whole nation? Or is it just, you know, people with fancy phones and fancy technology that will benefit from these things? Or is this going to help the whole country and or everyone? Like, yeah. uh, for example, if, you're, if you have a, a child that has a disability uh, in terms of seeing, and I can enhance his experience via 5G and the necessary education tools, to be able to learn better, uh, to be able to uh, learn the same subjects that you and me are learning. Of course, we don't have a disability, but if he can use a robot to enhance what he can do, we are assisting in creating the active, inclusive society. Yes, it's a slow process. It cannot be immediate. We do, certainly don't have enough smartphones in Namibia to be it immediate. But we can create centralized environments like classrooms where these people can be assisted. Uh, and we see uh, some improvement in that already, and a great interest to get internet to all the schools. Yeah. And we are actually actively driving that, because I think COVID was a lesson to us when everybody was disconnected. Yeah. Uh, and we cannot have it happen again. Uh, it also enhances us now that we can act operate in trade across borders. Okay. Because with a lower latency a network performance with faster data, you also get your reply faster. So okay. if you are trained it online, you are not waiting five minutes right. to reply and to make a decision. Mm -hmm. So the technology is also there to enhance and create more opportunities, yeah. not necessarily taking opportunities away. Right. Uh, it, you know, when you were a child, the careers that you could have cho chosen from was pretty limited. Now mm -hmm. you've got an array of careers right. that you, you don't have to be a nurse or a doctor or a teacher. Mm -hmm. you, you can be anything. You can yeah. be a programmer. You can be a content creator. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it all relies on ICT. <laughs> yeah, I'm saying, yeah, you can also be an influencer. But no, I'm just playing. Um, with regards to what you're saying, like I'm, I'm, I'm hearing this robot that can teach the disabled child and things like that. And I mean, I, I'm thinking, you know, trying to think integratedly and so on. It sounds really great, but um, 
it just sounds really expensive as well. It sounds, it sounds like pie in the sky kind of thing. How, how, I don't know how, you know, maybe whether this necessarily has to do with corporate governance, but how, if we making this part of our nation and we're thinking inclusivity and we're thinking national um, prosperity and economic development, how are we getting this robot to, I don't know, this, yeah, this robot to Shikuku or Kara, you know, Malta um, here or whatever. <laughs> Um, there's been um, a national directive from the government uh, to bridge the digital divide between the ones that are digitally um, uh, inclined and the ones that are not. Mm -hmm. And there has been a, a concerted effort from different industries to make sure that, you know, we, we do bridge that gap. Mm -hmm. um, robotics might be a far fetch from now, but that is the vision. Okay. And um, the... There's the likes, like I know there's a program with NAST that they're working directly with the, with the um, rural in the uh, Kunene regions and in the Omaheke region, uh, seeing how the impact and the possibility and the needs of um, how technology, uh, mobile technology can actually assist to improve their lives, be it establishment of businesses, be it general social impact, or social economic activities, but there are activities that they are doing, and these are concerted efforts from their side. Um, one of the things from um, MTC, what we are doing is that we are, are going out of these areas and making sure that we deploy technology, having data services available for for them. Uh, we also know that the universal uh, program that uh, the regulator had is just one of of um, the programs that have been established uh, to look and and work on that. So. 5G is basically just one of the tools to, and the means to get us to do that. Mm -hmm. But in a nutshell is that um, there are many other opportunities for the people that are in the rural mm -hmm. areas, for the ones that are not incapacitated, um, and they have been considered on how they can be empowered and actually be, 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 um, be, be included mm -hmm. in the efforts that are currently there for the fourth industrial revolution as well as the national directive. Okay. I mean, yeah, you're sort of touching on the next question, which oh. is stakeholder engagement. No, I like it. This is good. <laughs> We're on the same page, in the same book. Um, stakeholder engagement. Uh, how important is stakeholder engagement in governance of 5G technology? Like what strategies should companies adopt to effectively communicate with stakeholders about 5G-related changes and impact? Mm. I think, I think the, bi the, the, the biggest... Um, it's very critical and then the biggest element for stakeholder engagement is awareness mm -hmm. and having a, a, a good um, memorandum of understanding what um, what 5G is about. Right. I think that we cannot shy away from the fact that, you know, the impact of COVID and um, the, the, the stories that was uh, how COVID, uh, 5G was associated with yes. COVID how we can say that it did not have an impact. It did have an impact on that. And then mm. you find a lot of industries and a lot of people still shying away from 5G because of that. And I think aggressive, um, aggressive awareness uh, about what 5G is, uh, what the opportunities are, mm. and how it can actually be used um, holistically to benefit uh, the organization mm -hmm. and the economy and the social status within the country is very critical. And I think that we just need to establish very direct and um, uh, respective efforts to say mm -hmm. that, you know, this we are doing because we need to change the narrative and we need to make it very clear to all stakeholders what 5G is about and how big it is in the scope of our national development mm -hmm. within the country. Mm -hmm. and, yeah, um, we can do a lot. Um, there's many use cases from the other countries, how they have actually are progressed with um, leveraging on mm -hmm. the deployment of 5G within our country mm -hmm. that we still are yet to establish. Right. And it's also because of the fact that, you know, that awareness is not yeah. and the understanding is not. Do want to maybe just talk a little bit about that? I also would want your input on this. Um, other countries, maybe in Africa, that you can talk about that have done this successfully and so on. Mm. Um, I'll give you an example of um, Rwanda. Um, mm. One of their use cases that they have in their health sector, like for their rural areas and that are very uh, remote, um, what they do is that they have something that they call um, telemedicine. They're making use of uh -huh. drones to deliver their medicines yeah. to um, 
to the rural area, yeah. which is so effective, fast with the necessary, mm -hmm. improving the life, um, life expectancy within the areas. And this is just one of the things that, mm -hmm. you know, that are happening already that we can also leverage. Now, if you mm -hmm. think about our case where um, our grandmother needs to travel 60 kilometers mm. to just get to um, a health facility, and um, it's, it's an aspect of money that she also doesn't have, and the time, mm -hmm. and you know, uh, while it can actually be delivered in the comfort of the village where she is, mm -hmm. is these are the things that we are talking about, social, economic, and the health um, expectancies that will be the, that will be improved with um, the different use cases that we can mm -hmm. have with 5G. Okay, thank you. So before you answer that, I mean, I just, just want to be sure. I know, I know the World Health Organization, you know, established that yes, you know, we're not getting sick from 5G, but were there any other studies? Did we validate these or did we just say yes, the World Health Organization said so? Uh, obviously the World Health Organization did put out statements. Yeah. Uh, but what but we also must remember is that 5G is a wireless technology mm -hmm. using spectrum or radio waves. Yes. A virus cannot travel with radio waves. Right. Um, but yes, it had a severe effect. Uh, we had in various cases where uh, your citizens even went so far as burning some of the base stations when down. The effect, the, when you, sorry to interrupt you, when you say it, it had an effect, it's not people to get sick, but in saying no, the fact that the people so. believed they were getting sick, they yes. did, okay. Well, they, they even believed that, that it uh, changes your being into being, uh, have some magnetic powers and you could take yeah. things on your arms. It was various <laughs> photos. Yeah. Uh, it did not have a negative mm. uh, effect on the adoption of the technology. Mm. Uh, it also uh, resulted in some infrastructure being destroyed, wow. people destroying base stations cause their belief of this. So there was a different impact, but we believe we have addressed it as far as, uh, as we could. Uh, we addressed it via social media campaigns. Even last year, we had another social media campaign on mm -hmm. that 5G is not about uh, the virus, that yeah. what it can bring to you, that it's part of your, it's part of your life, it's part of your technology. Uh, and we've, we have highlighted some of the use cases of 5G to mm -hmm. get that message across. Because as I said to you, this is a customer-centric technology. Yeah. So I can only show it good if I can illustrate the benefit to you as, as the customer and yeah. what difference it can make. In mm -hmm. and, and that is what the, the change that we now have to do. Mm -hmm. It's not an off-the-shelf product. Right. Uh, this is tailor-made to the consumer. Okay. All right. Um, I like this. This is exciting. I, I want to open it up maybe for questions and comments. I see our audience has grown bigger since we started. Um, welcome to you who are here in person. And maybe our tech team at the back can look for some of the questions online so that we can ask those. But if there, there aren't any questions. Okay. Do we have questions in here or comments? Yes, sir. Maybe just um, identify yourself and before you ask your question or make your comment. Can you hear me? Thank Sorry. you very much. Oh. Uh, my name is Simon Yambo. Um, I, I have uh, um, possibly two questions. So I'm more worried about uh, the expectation of the general public. Yeah. Um, what is it that they may expect? Uh, to change in their daily lives because of 5G? Is it just the five in, uh, fast internet speed or the something uh, else? Especially the normal person who doesn't understand how this benefits the organizations and other things. That we understand some of us, but uh, the general person in the public, what is it that they must expect to see in their general life? Okay. Um, number two. Will you take that moment? There is uh, Elon Musk Starlink. Uh, it's also being uh, thought as a fast internet, which is very good for especially offshore organizations, you know, all those kind of things. Does it also use um, 5G um, capabilities or what is the difference between the two? 
because I understand. Uh, Sorry, just say that again. The uh, Elon Musk doesn't starring. between two. The Starlink. Sorry. The Starlink. Okay. Oh yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, it, it's being uh, talked about as one of the fastest internet also available. You don't know about. That. Um, I I don't know if it's also using the five G capabilities or what is going on with there. Mm -hmm. But uh, what is what sets it apart? What sets five G apart from? Starlink, for example, okay. uh, in terms of uh, latency and uh, their capability. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Yambo. Are there any, maybe let's answer that. Uh, Dr. Maniga, do you have answers for those? The general expectation from the users um, is data capability. Um, when you have your phone, you, you don't want any latency. If you're watching your video, WhatsApp, or even on YouTube, you always expect Expecting to have that seamless experience of what. And now the current challenges that we have um, are multifold. You no, know, it can be because where you are, or it can be because of the the the, the right not the, the right technology that you are not exposed to. So if you want to watch a video and you are in an area that only has a 3G and it doesn't have a 4G, your experience might not be as affected. So what 5G does, or even if you have 4G, so what 5G does is that it gives you that experience where you can download a video or you can have good data experience. So good that you know you don't experience a delay or a buffer or where the video is hanging. It's because 5G will give you one that you will not actually experience something like that. But now in addition to just having a video because you can watch on your movie, you can watch your movie with um, a good data speed, is that um, it, 5G brings additional benefits with that. For example, um, we're talking about uh, telemedicine. Um, we're talking about the use case of a doctor having an, an off-site surgery. We, you find some of the patients that have medical wearable devices, patients that have high, high they can wear a device, but this device needs to, to, to connect it to no latency. There shouldn't be any delay because if any, there's any change with the heartbeat, it will inform the doctor immediately. That is one of the use cases that from the, the, the customers, not only on the phone. Um, I was giving an example of um, the device at, at your house that you can have. Uh, from you, that if you come with your fridge or with your garage, or in a use case um, where there's a delay when any security aspect at your house compromised for some reason, it happens that there's always a delay. You know, the impact when it happens and the impact when the security um, there can be a but the benefits that comes with 5G is happens immediately. Um, your heartbeat is formed immediately. The, the security is formed immediately. The garage is informed immediately. The, the video that you're watching is uninterrupted. The meeting that you're having on, on uninterrupted. It's the benefits that comes with um, with with capability unprecedented data experience you don't have with current technology. That the usual person on the and you can set the industry. There are many different um, benefits that we can um, what it is that the person on the can benefit from 5G. I hope I'm and we talk about selling whether it's why it's better than 5G or not, or is it the same? Is that what you asked? Yeah, we we don't know about Starlink. I, I don't know yeah. about Starlink, but I think it's she'll be the first one. Starlink is a, is a satellite constellation, uh, while uh, 5G is a terrestrial network. Okay, English. Uh, which means the, uh, Starlink works via satellite. Mm -hmm. uh, 5G is dependent on the network you roll out uh, mm -hmm. uh, on, the, on the ground. Um, both of them have uh, enhanced uh, data capabilities. Uh, however, whereas 5G is more difficult to deploy in rural areas, 
Stalin can really easily uh, reach the rural areas. It's not dependent on uh, physical links to that area it, as it is delivered from the sky itself. But this is not the only technologies that we see or that are coming forth. We have also seen now that uh, the testing of high altitude platforms, which will interlink then with the mobile networks to provide also data services and voice services in areas where there is no physical infrastructure. Uh, that the technology on our doorstep is then also that you do not need a special device but you can use your mobile phone to make use of those high altitude platform and uh, uh, satellite constellations directly uh, in conjunction with the mobile network. So the one is complementary to the other. Both have its special market segments that it will serve and both can equally provide good data service. Yeah, in the media. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Not yet. And it would need your permission. Yeah. Uh, obviously, yes. Okay. <laughs> All right. Are there any other questions? Thank you so much. Yes. Uh, Jochen Traut. I was many years in the industry. I have a question: Is are the operators really ready to benefit from the five G technology? Because when you read globally, people regard 5G as a failure because there's a lot of hype of what 5G can do. However, you can have a 5G base station. If you can't backhaul it back with an optic fiber link, mm -hmm. it helps nothing. Then you must have a core, which is 5G. But what happened in the past with most of the operators is they got the spectrum, they deploy 5G base stations, but they don't have the infrastructure to backhaul it, and then they still use 4G as their core network. Mm -hmm. Now, how ready are the Namibian operators to actually give the real benefit to the consumer what 5G can offer? Because most of the operators, when you read it, have still got this operator-centric mindset. Are they ready to bring in other players like mm -hmm. the mining industry to build their own network, use their infrastructure? Because when you look at it, Namibians are not doing infrastructure sharing. Mm -hmm. If you drive down to Spok op Munt now, just in front of Vergenoeg, You'll see four fiber lines plus a power line running through the desert. From every operator installing their own fiber lines from Windhoek to Swakop Mund. Oh. So the concern that I have is fiber, 5G will work in Windhoek, Swakop Mund, where fiber infrastructure is. What about the rural areas? Mm. Because now the investment focuses on 5G, yes. yet we don't even have 2G or 3G in the rural areas. That's the one side, okay. and that, that, that I need to find out. And then the other thing which I can see, and that's more to the, to the regulator side, with splicing or splitting of your spectrum, it's a way of spectrum sharing. Is there a rethinking? Because spectrum sharing becomes now an issue as well, because you have that splice, you can share that with another operator or ISP that wants to do the network. Is, is the trend is towards spectrum sharing, and is, is the regulator ready for spectrum sharing? Okay. Thank you, sir. Manka, you take the first one and you take the second one. Yeah. The yes. operator question. Yeah. <laughs> and we are in our last 10 minutes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> the hype or the excitement about. And we actually understand. Can you hear her? Can you hear her well? Okay. All right. That we would have deployed the 5G. Back in 2020, because just to say, for a moment, for yeah, well, that fluid and, man guy. Yeah, mm -hmm. and so we were under the impression that we will actually do the same again, right? Because we've been preparing ourselves already. And one of the things, biggest components of 5G deployment is a cloud component. We've been doing that. We have been cloudifying our environment. We we got the infrastructure necessary for for 5G deployment. Um, and what we have done in addition to that, um, included by uh, is that you know you need fiber. We have taken the decision to aggressively um, upgrade our backbones with the fiber network. Um, in fact, um, the, the multiple uh, fiber links that is referring to just one of our efforts to make sure that you know we are readying ourselves for fiber. So our environment is a cloud not a 4G cloud environment. Uh, the env cloud environment that we've deployed is 5G ready. 
Um, so it's the matter of getting the necessary licenses and spectrum that deploy. Um, in addition, you know, I think what I want to highlight is that, you know, 5G, uh, as I said, that is a different ball game from 4G and 3G. It's a niche technology. It's really not a technology for everybody on the street, but you, you need to have that need, that use um, for, for, for you to realize the benefits from it. Um, so with, with that is that we have the intelligence in our network. When we, every time we do a deployment, we can always tell that around this area, in this tower, we have um, 10,000 5G capable devices, or we have 15,000 4G capable devices. So this is one of the statistical facts that we're actually using that drives our decision where to deploy what. So we just don't do it in the vacuum, not being informed how it actually applies into the strategy and the need of our customer. So, but we have prepared ourselves, infrastructure-wise, technical-wise, we are up to that. And then the plan and the strategy that we have internally on how we're going to deploy it, who we're going to deploy it with, we have also done that. We had discussion with some of the mines already, and we were ready to set up uh, the, the 5G network. But unfortunately, it was just from their side, they were not ready with the correct um, 5G capable devices in order for them. So MTC has been ready for a while now. It's dynamics that are currently mm -hmm. not that we need to consider. Okay. Does that answer your question? Yeah. <laughs> okay. um, Ms. Renal, um, talk about the splicing. Uh, indeed, uh, spectrum is one of the key issues of uh, the The regulator has revamped its regulatory framework. We can provide for full uh, shared access to spectrum. It's already part of the framework. However, at this stage, we've got no interest from the industry spectrum they okay. all would like to have it they exclusively own. from themselves but uh, at the same time the regulator has set aside bands okay. for enterprise use which means uh, we for example uh, if it's a mine applying we will only grant the spectrum for the mining area why will we will use the same spectrum for another mine in another area mm -hmm. to get more efficient use out of the spectrum so we have catered that. We are also open to uh, dynamic sharing of the spectrum bands. It's clearly indicated in the uh, regulators' in, uh, the spectrum strategy as well that when you apply for, uh, for example, for spectrum uh, in the 2600, the 3500, or the 26 gigahertz, you can also do dynamic sharing with the bands that you already have. Mm -hmm. uh, currently, the strategy is under review. We have started uh, in. Uh, ask already for input contributions. Uh, the deadline was the 7th of June. So the next step is that we will be putting a draft strategy on the table for um, public consultation on the way forward and they come up with a roadmap. Mm -hmm. But spectrum uh, staging is definitely on the table. We have also seen it under countries. Uh, it's a question of is uh, the operators mature enough to want to share the spectrum with each other <laughs> or do they want like to have it for themselves mm -hmm. uh, unfortunately if you want to have it for yourself it's going to come at a higher price because right. you're excluding others from sharing the spectrum so um, there's many dynamics at the moment in the spectrum uh, we have availed low band spectrum uh, especially then also for the more rural rollout of 5g and 4g the launch of the Universal Service Fund is imminent. You can watch the press, uh, where we will then also avail Spectrum uh, together with funding for the ro further rollout of uh, based uh, towers in rural areas, or what we call unserved areas or underserved areas. If it's only a 2G tower, we will regard it as underserved, as it doesn't make the broadband standard. Mm -hmm. Or the investment that will be done via the US F fund will be for 4G and 5G. Oh, wow. oh okay. Well, I like that. What do you think, sir? Okay. <laughs> question. All right. Yes, no, it was you, Yoki. All right. We, we are in our last five minutes of, of, of being online. And this has been really exciting. I hope our viewers and our audience here, you know, we know that we're not going to get cancer or COVID from 5G. And so maybe as we closing and giving your final, you know, final closing remarks, 
um, and especially since we're framing this around corporate governance and what you know boards should look out for or think about. Maybe just your final. Oh, there's a question from Mr. Galloway. All right, sir. Steve Galloway. Uh, Edla, you prompted me by saying we know we're not going to get cancer. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> No, that's not funny, sir. So, so, so we talked a little bit about health, and, and clearly the reference to health and, and the COVID spreading was obviously fake news. I mean, nobody, nobody believed that for a moment. There are some serious articles by neurologists mm. who, who write about the electromagnetic uh, impact on people's brains. And now, you know, we're, we're not the first uh, mover here, and, and there's a lot of advantage in following others. So there is evidence now that, that electromagnetic uh, waves can affect brain and can affect heart and all of that. Yes. And, you know, the counter-argument is we've been exposed to it with these horrible de devices for a long time. Microwaves. So the question is this. If, if some of these neurologists are, neurologists are correct that 5G has an enhanced uh, impact on, on brain, heart, etc., if, if they're correct, and there are a lot of articles, I've sent Monica a few of them. Uh, she, she's got counter articles, of course. But I, the question is, if, if they are correct and if, if data comes out, as has been the case with vaccines, you know, everybody said vaccines are fine, do them. They don't give you cancer. In fact, there's a lot of evidence now that vaccines have accelerated cancer in certain groups of people. Mm. You know, it's not arguable anymore. So my question is, is it the operator's responsibility or is it the regulator's responsibility to make people aware of any risks that there are and, and, to, and to sort of put health warnings out there if they don't know what the risks are? Is it, is it the operator or is it the regulator? And what research have you done on other cases to, to make that statement that, that you made that it won't cause cancer? Yeah. Yeah. You know, where are we in that spectrum? And, and do I go to Monica or do I go to Renell if I do get cancer and it's proven to be because of 5G? <laughs> thank you. Yes, thank you. Monica, do you want to answer that? <laughs> yeah. I think especially because we, everybody was feeling, breathing better. Now I, don't, now I think people are breathing less better now. <laughs> yeah. You see, um, one looks at the classification of and having the iodized and non-iodized classification, yeah. meaning that the, the, the non-iodized and the one is safe and the one that's not safe. And under the one that's not safe, you find this. Um, you will also find um, some of the services that we are exposed to going to the Mammograms and that. so there's actually that sign when you go to hospital that actually shows dangerous. But portions and the standards that are established. Um, so the the, the 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 uncertainty I I believe that came with five G. But look at all the other technology. Their coverage is over a bigger area, twenty kilometers. So you can only have a station every 40 minutes for you to be able to have a call. Some of them every two minutes, depending on the But when it comes to 5G, high end 5G, you have a, a space of a radius of five kilometers. So in order for you to continuous call, every five kilometers, there must be another base. Now, the frequency that's generated by these. Oh, so it would be less than? That lesson is more condensed. Mm -hmm. And this is one of the uncertainties actually um, people have about the exposure to this. Yeah, if it's more condensed. Because it's every five kilometers. Yeah. It was like for the 3G or the 2 20 kilometers. So it's fine. Um, so this has, one, has been one of the reasons that you know, when we have done, because the telecom was actually took us delving into security. Because we are the users of the technology and we have families, we all don't want to be exposed to that danger. Mm -hmm. So we, we did that. Um, and uh, unfortunately, our test was, was, a, 
because at this top, um, they were no official, but we, we had many articles, we had interviews with uh, Namibia, yeah, Radiation, okay. Department, Ministry of Health. We had discussions with them, and you know, this is how we actually came to the conclusion that, that it is. But I think uh, Steve made a very um, critical point. You know, it's very prominent to say that, you know, we can have the understanding and the belief that currently safe, but then three years, four years down the line, there can be new um, new findings from that. And I think this this is a reason why the NPR, the National um, Radiation Body, I mentioned, IT body that I mentioned, who are regulated, that is mentioning that collectively the decision needs to be because we need to safeguard our people, which is actually the first in the most. Uh, important aspect that we have because it's not only about technology or pushing out this technology but our safety is um, <clears throat> objective that we have. Uh, but um, so far as I said that the research that we have done on our site was a desktop research uh, and the findings there were nothing was really nothing was founded to be the case there Did were no empirical evidence which showed that that is the case but we really need to be very sensitive about it because I don't want any of my family members to get um, cancer or anything like that because yeah. of the technology. So did you then not see any of the articles that that, he, that Steve mentioned? Or, I mean, since you did desktop, that means you did research, right? Yes. yes. So I did. I, I read them, but then I had found the one. So you chose the other one? No, no, no. I, I was balancing them. <laughs> I like, like, no, I'm just wondering what made one choose the one versus the other. Like, what made the one more credible than mm. the other? Because you see, you know, some of the researchers are qualitative, you know, and, um, and, and, and some of them, when you read them, they are quantitative and there are outputs that they have, they have their the statistics that they have, but then at the end of the conclusion, that's where it comes from. Mm -hmm. that, but okay, but it sounds like an subjective opinion right. that you have. Okay. So, compared to that. Mm -hmm. Then balances everything out to say that like, no, but yes, yeah. I think what I what I the little bit of reading that I did was that yes, it can, it has the potential to cause radiation, but it's in terms of the I don't know how much it is. You know what I mean? Like I think like with the microwave, mm -hmm. like with the microwave, you can you know it can bad, but depending on the exposure, like you said with with yes, getting X rays and things like that. Yeah, apparently people are doing this to me. We need to be finishing right now. Um, but so I'm thinking in terms of 5G, um, depending on the exposure or the, the what is that? I don't want to say intensity or whatever, because it's probably not, that's not the word that you use. Yeah, um, that would be the case. And so for technology to work, you don't need that amount of, um, so on. Are we, are we still live or are we cut off? <laughs> We're still live, yeah. Yeah. So maybe let's wrap up. Yeah, it sounds like we need to maybe we're talking about AI next time. I don't know whether we can sneak in 5G um, because on the 11th next week, Thursday, actually continuing um, talking about AI. Um, and since we talked robotics and 5G, we can probably ask this question. Um, maybe just to wrap up, since you know people are giving us the evil eye, <laughs> we need to finish. Um, closing uh, remark. Um, uh, it, uh, uh, yes, there's always all the excitement and the hype. Uh, how it will play out in Namibia, it will be a collective effort between the uh, operators as well as the um, um, regulator itself. Uh, we have a strategy that we are busy implementing, and if you look at that strategy, specific initiatives for the Namibian authority. We are working in terms of also to safeguard public health, also to bring uh, the new technology to Namibia, uh, not in leaps and bounds, but probably we will start small and then the country will grow from there as more and more people uh, adopt us. I will remember when GSM or 2G launched, they said they will not, MPC will not have more than 50,000 customers. It looks quite different to that. <laughs> Thank you. You're making me want to ask more questions, but I will not. But yes, go ahead. The expectation of what what can actually come about with the deployment of 
5G mm -hmm. in our country. For the general user, um, we are complaining about your data finishing very fast because of the video. 5G is surely going to ensure that because it's going to be a jump. Finish your data. Finish your data. Uh -huh. Yeah, because the, 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 the tunnel is so open. Oh. So whatever it is that you're downloading is very fast. So there's a lot of benefits that comes with 5G. There's a lot of business opportunities that comes with 5G. So looking at the digital divide, you know, what we can, um, what we can establish with that. Um, I think it's very exciting. There's some of the industries that we can actually start off the niche technology that we can showcase how 5G has benefited the socioeconomic development in our I'm excited about it. I'm just excited, um, just for my country, I'm, I'm a proud Namibian that, you know, we, we really, I'm looking ahead and we're really busy, um, you know, imp implementing or busy uh, executing our plans, our prosperity plans, and really looking to be a prosperous nation and all these initiatives. Um, but as always, we're hoping that we're doing it responsibly and sustainably, um, thinking integratedly. And so, and so this is what we advocate for. This is where we have these conversations. So we hope that you tune in again next Thursday. Um, we're going to be here again, and we're going to talk about AI. Um, so follow us on our social media platforms, and we'll see you again. Have a good evening. Thank you.